It's a set in World War II. Uh -huh. The military finds it and they weaponize it against Germany. Fantastic. Film photography YouTube is weird. I get that YouTube is basically a search engine and one of the main things someone would search for is technique and stuff like cameras and film. But the main thing about photography and film photography is actually doing it. So that's what I'm doing on this video. Just taking photos of Shelby at the historic Overton Theater in Overton, Texas, built in 1938. There's a link in the description if you want to read about it. It, it used to be like incredible. Shelby and I workshopped some ideas beforehand, mostly wardrobe, and I thought about what type of film I would want to shoot there. I'd picked this location out because I'd known about it for a while, and they just happened to be not too far from there when we were planning this. It's always nice to have a location in your back pocket for the right occasion. Oh, that's, that's good. I like that. Perfect. All right. All right, that's, oh, that looks great. Oh. I brought a Hasselblad 503C and a newly acquired Nikon F6. I usually start shooting with 35mm when using two cameras because it can help find a flow faster, but I decided to do the opposite this time. And I gotta change film. We're looking at some Kodak Gold 200 right now. Shooting with multiple formats is fun, but also it can be disorienting and one of the reasons I stopped bringing a digital camera with me on shoots. It helps to be decisive if one thing is working better than the other. The cost or quality of a camera is not what dictates what is coming out of the shoot. In this shoot, I'm okay with the Hasselblad photos, but it's really the 35mm ones that feel like they have the right energy. But I'm not sure I would have reached that decision if I hadn't brought the Hasselblad along and shot these photos especially. So that's part of the fun of having multiple formats on a shoot. Aside from, you know, the weight of the backpack or bag or whatever and carrying them. Still, I like options. Stand in front of that door. I love those circles. Hi. By the way, you can see larger resolution yeah. versions yeah. of all of these photos on my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month and joining these super awesome people. That's awesome. I'm gonna try to... Who I am super thankful for. I really appreciate everyone who's contributed. And if you want to contribute, absolutely do. Uh, the link will be in the description. Thank you. Speaking of awesome, that F6 shutter sound is extremely satisfying. For those who don't know, Nikon in the 80s and 90s especially, or yeah, pretty much all the 90s, were just amazing. They were top of the game, really amazing stuff. It wasn't until the digital era had really fully taken hold that Canon kind of took them over. But what I really liked about the F6 in this context was that I could think more freely since I had 36 frames and just shoot a little more loosely. And it allowed me to explore the scene more and also led me to realize that honestly, this theater setting was a lot better with 35 millimeter film. By the way, I'm about to show you a photo with a poorly foreshortened elbow. I think that's a little too dominant with a wide angle shot. And this elbow is basically cut off but you can see how I had them turn a little bit and show the rest of the arm and it kind of fixed the composition problems. And having a few extra frames of 35 millimeter did help me work through some variations that I thought were pretty helpful, like especially on these closer shots where I feel like that's a better foreshortening. But digital to me kind of goes overboard with the option thing so having a, a little bit of extra slack is helpful but really the thing that sold me on the 35 millimeter was that the grain really worked with the painted over art deco styling of the theater More detail might have been helpful, as gritty as everything was, but it wasn't about how gritty the theater was. That was a background element of this shoot. Additionally, the Nikon 28mm 2.8 AIS lens I use is really great and captures extremely nice detail. Um, not quite. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, a little more. Oh, the other way? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
All right. But still, I wanted to bounce around a little bit, and so I shot this roll of Cinestill 400D on the opposite side of the theater. I still uh, found that I didn't really balance the flash as well as I wanted to. I usually go for like a two stop under exposure on the background. And for whatever reason, I had been thinking I needed to make the background kind of even on as far as the ratio goes, which is the lightness of the background versus the lightness of the subject in this case. And I don't know why I did that. Maybe I thought I was it was going to fall too dark, but that's usually where I kind of get the drama from. So these feel a little flat and maybe positively, possibly, un unlit by artificial light. But they just kind of are lacking a little element to me. But they're still pretty nice, if I can say that. Just doesn't feel like the dramatic flashlit stuff I was kind of going for. Realizing the 120 was not completely meshing with me on this day, I decided to only go with the F6 and put a roll of Fuji 400 through it for this final setup. Shelby changed into this really cool red dress and we decided to keep working around the front of the theater after a quick walk around as you saw. The open shade lighting was really nice, especially at 400 ISO. And I only wish I could just autofocus convert this amazing Nikon 28mm lens because it is easily one of the best lenses I've ever used. I love this kind of pill-shaped window that still echoes a lot of that art deco beauty that this theater embodied in its prime. And I think this used to be the box office. But anyway, they had that really cool wet red dress and I thought it stood out really well. I noticed the reflection in the window was probably something I could make tame enough that it would become part of the photo. And so I used the curve in the window and framed around that. And I wanted to try the red against the very light blue of the door as well. And I think it worked really well. We tried some various poses and variations. And as I mentioned earlier with doing variations on 35mm, I'm really happy that I decided to do this because it allowed them to play with poses, allowed us to take a few extra risks, though that can be possible on like a 12 shot at a time medium format camera, it is nice to have 36 frames to play with. It's enough to experiment, but not so much that you get into trouble, like I feel like happens with digital. But anyway, let's take a look at them and we'll start off with a ton of variations. You see little low angle, closer, further back, straight ahead, at an angle, looking down, looking up, looking into the lens and away from the lens. Although that's not necessarily this specific one. I don't shoot a lot of horizontal photos, so I'm pretty happy that I was doing that on this shoot. I especially love how these turned out. The body turned away from the head, the eyes looking into the camera and away, the little hint of environment that you can see in the window that didn't blow out thankfully because it was sunset. And now the color combination of that really stark red dress as a an element floating over that door with the windows. You can break it down into geometry and shapes and composition, the color of their eyes, and even that muted rust of the chain and hook that strangely hold the door shut. I'm terrible at describing the color wheel, but it works mentally if that makes sense. But like I said at the beginning, to me this is film photography. I guess it could be photography in general, but with film, to me, it helps connect like this. I am having a conversation with Shelby. We shot photos for about an hour, and we weren't thinking one bit about how they look, because there was no screen to stare at. We're connecting, and that's where good art happens. Doing, doing well with you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I good. like it a lot. I'm shooting some uh, Portra on it right Oh, now. nice. Wait, at which speed? 400 or 800? Uh, 400. Okay, yeah. Shelby is also getting into film photography, so we were talking about the camera they're using in a Canon Rebel I sold them when they wanted to move up from a point and shoot. See? We connected. Speaking of connecting, please subscribe, leave a comment, like the video, turn on notifications, let me know what you think, check out the other videos I have, there are a couple linked right here, and I really appreciate you watching this video, and I will be back soon. Thank you.